The other day I was looking for a tray for an upcoming Halloween party and I realized I don't own one. So I thought, what the heck, I know a little bit about woodworking and why go out and buy a platter when you can make your own? So in this wood story, you'll see how I start a simple project that goes really wrong and how I pivot to save my work. But the question is, will it be ready before my party? So for this project, you're going to need an acrylic template. And if you don't have one, that's okay. You can purchase these online or you can take a look down in the comments and you can grab one from my store. Uh, these are really cheap, inexpensive, and you can use them over and over again. And today I'm going to be using a piece of cherry wood just because I had it lying around. It's a scrap piece of wood and it fit my shape perfectly. When making a tray using a router template, you want to make sure that your wood is at least one inch deep and ideally 1.5, but it just depends on how deep you want your tray to be. You also want to make sure that you're attaching your acrylic template with double sided tape that is of high quality. You do not want to risk that this template comes off during routering. I'll be using three different bits for this project. The first one is just a straight router bit and I'll be using this bit with a brushing which will allow me to get really close to my acrylic template without touching the edges. I'll also be using a plunge bit with a built-in bearing and I'll finish it off with a bowl bit that also has a bearing. You may wonder why I'm not just using the plunge bit with the built-in bearing to begin with. And that's because the bearing does not touch the template, it's too thin. Which means that if I attempted to use it, I would cut right into my template instead of riding along it. So by using my straight bit with the brushing, I'll be able to create that initial depth needed so that the next bit can ride in this new groove and on the template. So the bit that I had in my router just decided to loosen and come out. You can see that it's supposed to be down here and it came out. And it did that while I was doing my groove, which means that I was working on the edge. I thought it felt a little bit funny, so I did stop, but it was too late. See if you can see it. So this is where we're at. I've routed out all of the inside of this shape. And as mentioned before, I did have one little accident where my bit actually came out of my router, which meant that it went a lot deeper than I intended to. And it's so deep that I can't just match it with all the other stuff, because if I did, there might not be enough uh, support in the bottom to actually have this bowl work at the fact. So what I'm planning to do instead is probably fill it with a bit of epoxy once I'm done, but we'll do that at the end. For now, we're going to start working on the outside shape and take that down to size before routering out that part. Before using my bandsaw, I like to trace my template with a Sharpie. I find that it's a lot easier to see the line over by the bandsaw when you have this black line to follow. So the idea here is that we're going to take away as much as we possibly can without actually going into the template on the bandsaw. And then we're going to take it over to the router and we're going to use a bearing again in order to have it ride along the template to take off that last little bit. And that's going to ensure that the template is absolutely perfect. And you'll also see here that when I'm using my bandsaw, I'm getting a lot of burn marks on it. But I'm not too worried because I know that my router over at my router table, that will take care of that in the end. And once the last little bit has been routered off, then it is safe to remove the template. Just make sure that you take it easy when you take it off because the template can break. So you don't want to be too rough if you're planning on using it again. And then began the fun part of sanding. I did end up sanding most of this shape by hand, um, which really wasn't that bad because most of it is very smooth after using the router. So the sanding really did make it look quite nice. And I also sanded the hole that my router incident left me with. And it actually wasn't that bad once that was done. But I still couldn't leave it the way that it was. So I did decide to use some epoxy to fix the hole and add a cool effect by adding a little bit of golden sparkle to it. To avoid getting bubbles, I brushed on a thin layer of epoxy to the bottom and sides first before doing my pour. 
Epoxy is still a very new tool for me, so if you have any good advice for getting great results, please tell me down in the comments. And while you're here, thank you so much for following along. Your support means the world to me, so please like and subscribe for more great content. I let the epoxy dry for a full 24 hours before sanding down the top edges to clean it up again. After that, it was ready to be sealed and I used two coats of walrus oil that I let dry in between each coat. And before I knew it, this router tray was done with ample time before my Halloween party. So I'll be using it as a fall display on my dining table all fall long. For more great fall decor videos, check out this super easy porch sign that you can make in just a few hours for less than 20 bucks. I'll see you soon in the next Wood Story.